Hey, welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel, the place of the gospel message of hope and joy and love. And we're coming up to, uh, to Christmas here, the second Sunday of Advent. We can't let an Advent and Christmas season go by without reading and reflecting the story of Mary. The story of God asking Mary, this young girl, this virgin, to be the mother of Christ, the Savior of the world. So let's read it from Luke. So the story of Mary and the angel Gabriel coming to her and also how Mary received that news and also what she did with it when she went and visited her cousin Elizabeth. I think that's a, a wonderful story to read. So from Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent, was sent from God to a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive and in your womb and bear a son. And, he shall, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. So this message from Gabriel to this, you know, historians say Mary must have come from a Jewish family, probably not very um, rich or famous probably very young, at a, at a tender age of maybe 16, um, a virgin. She had not, she was not married. Um, she was betrothed to be married to a man called Joseph. And here, an angel saying that you, Mary, are chosen by God to bear a son, conceived by the Holy Spirit, who will be the, the Savior, who, whose kingdom will never end. Isn't that amazing? That, that I mean, who, who would receive a news, uh, a message like that and, and not be like, wow, you know, why me? Or, and how, how did Mary respond? Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? So she asked a common sense question. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born and will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, and this is the important part, so first she asked, how will this, how will this work? And the angel answered, and now, m moments later, she says this, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. So that, that simple faith, that trust, hey, I'm just a servant of God, here I am, let it be to me according to your word. So that, that unquestioning faith of Mary, I'm not worthy to be your servant, God, but I'm ready, I'm here. And it says the angel departed from her. So just from that story, I mean, that's amazing. So Mary, to open up her heart to say, let it be done to me, I'm your servant, God, what an example of a true woman um, that all of us should really take the obedience, the humility, the willingness for great things from God to happen to us even though it doesn't make sense to us humanly, even though you can actually look ahead and see the, the cost that it might have to us. You know, what will other people say? The, the scandal, the uh, um, how will anybody understand this who didn't see the angel and hear his message? But Mary unquestionably said, yes, I'm here. I'm a, I'm a servant of God, and let it be done to me. Then I love this story, how it goes on. So naturally, she does what most people would do. She, she seeks someone who might understand, 
So she figures her, her, her uh, cousin Elizabeth, who the angel had talked to her about, um, would understand. So it says, Mary ro arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. So, wow, that was a beautiful... Again, the Spirit of God working. How did Mary know? How did Elizabeth know? Well, Elizabeth knew right when Mary came in the room and her baby inside her womb knew that this was the Lord, Jesus, conceived by the Holy Spirit, growing in Mary. And they rejoiced together. They, they believed. They knew that this was the Lord. Isn't that amazing? And then Mary, what's her response? She comes out with this amazing song, this poem of praise, of humility, of, of joy, of, um, of wonder at God's work. And here it is, the, the song of Mary. I know it's often sung or, or used or read in, in church services around this time of year. And Mary said, here it is, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. So right away, she's saying, she's giving all the praise to God, saying God has done great things for me, this, this humble, unworthy servant, and she's giving praise to God. She's not questioning it. And we should have that same attitude of always giving praise to God and rejoicing that God can work on whoever he chooses. And she goes on, and his mercy is for all those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. So those words, those are um, they're a little you know, controversial, almost revolutionary, right? God, God strikes down what is proud, what is of human worth. You know, the power, the money, the wealth. That's not where God worked here. He worked in a humble, unassuming, um, unimportant, lowly young young woman. And, and that's the way God works. He works where we don't expect it. He'll, he, 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 loves, he loves the downcast, the sinner, the lowly. And that's where he wants to show his power. It shows he comes for everybody. And that's what Mary is saying here in this, in this song of praise. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. So you have to remember Mary's people, the Jewish people, were being oppressed by outside conquerors, and they were longing for the day of the return of the, the greatness of their people and their kingdom. But here, God was coming. Jesus was coming, a Lord, a Savior for all people. Uh, and, uh, and Mary was chosen to carry him and hear her song of praise attested to God, to his greatness, to his working in anybody, into the, into the lowly, into the humble, and, and take hope from that. This is the message of Christmas, that God can come into your life, into your heart, into my life, where it's least expected, and he can work great things. And our response should be, let it be done to us as your will, God, and we should be willing to, to forward that love, that generosity everywhere and point to Jesus, our Savior. It says, and Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. And we'll hear the rest of the story later about the birth of Christ. But what a wonderful thing to reflect on, the story of Mary and her song of praise, of trust, of hope, of revolution, that God will turn the world upside down. So God bless you. Have a wonderful second week of Advent and expect good things to happen. Jesus is coming. We'll see you later. Remy and I are going to go take a walk and see where else we can see the glory of the Lord. Come on, Remy, let's go.